Hello everybody and welcome to Ancient Architects. Please subscribe now to get the latest ancient history news and independent research from around the world. Many of you will have seen my recent video on the ancient cave settlement in Turkey, a site known as Gedikeya or Inhisar Cave, which contains evidence of human settlement from 16,500 years ago. The finds that date to this remote time include stone and bone objects with 70 arrowheads, and these are found throughout the cave. After reading the news story in the Turkish press, I researched the time period and saw that it coincided with the H1 Heinrich event, which saw the plunging of global temperatures a few thousand years before the famous Younger Dryas. As mentioned in the video, a Heinrich event is when large groups of icebergs break off glaciers in the North Atlantic, from both European and Laurentide ice sheets. The melting of these icebergs put vast amounts of fresh water into the ocean, and such an event can lead to global climate fluctuations. Data has been collected from all over the world, including the Nile Delta, the Red Sea, Greenland ice cores, Antarctica, and so on and they all show a drop in temperature, some places more so than others. Interestingly, the recorded sea surface temperatures at the Red Sea and Nile Delta region show far lower temperatures than those recorded in the Younger Dryas. The H1 Heinrich event also saw an increase in atmospheric dust from the Sahara. This means the H1 event was an arid interval for North Africa and this also coincides with low lake levels seen across the African continent. So, during H1, we have reduced global temperatures, which varies from continent to continent, and we have a more arid North Africa with low lake levels. But this is actually the tip of the iceberg, and with more research, I discovered that around 16,500 years ago, the Earth was in the middle of a major and sudden climate catastrophe. As the popular scientific press reported in 2011, much of Africa and southern Asia saw an expansive mega drought between 17,000 and 16,000 years ago, and this was one of the most intense and far-reaching dry periods in the history of modern humans. The drought struck all of southern Asia and most of the African continent. Africa's Lake Victoria dried out, and this is the world's largest tropical lake, and also the source of the River Nile. The same happened to Lake Tanna in Ethiopia, and also Lake Van in Turkey. Monsoons from China to the Mediterranean brought little or no rain. The mega drought coincided with the peak of the H1 Heinrich event, which lasted around 3,000 years, roughly between 18,000 and 15,000 years ago, when icebergs and their meltwater surged into the North Atlantic, having a major climatic impact on the tropics. It led to the harshest mega drought in at least the past 50,000 years, and the scientific processes linking the Heinrich event to the mega drought are still not fully understood. Some say there was a southward shift in the intertropical convergence zone, where winds meet at the equator creating a tropical rain belt. This would have starved the region of rainfall, but apparently, such an explanation would not explain the immense scale of the drought. In addition to a moving convergence zone, the tropical rainfall systems over Africa and southern Asia must have also dramatically weakened perhaps a response to the cooling sea surface and less water evaporating off it. Whatever the specific processes that were involved, it shows how vulnerable and interlinked the Earth systems were towards the end of the last ice age. And of course, this would have affected human populations. In my recent video, I linked the cave deposits of the Inhisar cave in Turkey to this major climatic event, and I don't think it's a coincidence that people in this region settled in a deep cave, especially during a time of colder temperatures, but is there more evidence around the world of humans moving into caves around the time of the H1 event? 
Well, in a cave in the Annamite Mountains of northern Laos, a country that borders Thailand, Cambodia and Vietnam, skulls and skeletons dated to 16,000 years ago, belonging to several modern humans were discovered, indicating that 7,000 kilometers east of the Inhisar Cave, humans were moving into cave settlements at a similar time. Of course, we also have the famous Lascaux Cave in France, known for its incredible cave paintings, and located much closer to the cooling Atlantic Ocean. The age of the paintings in this cave are estimated to be around 17,000 years old, well within the bounds of the 3,000 year long H1 Heinrich event. The art inside this cave is probably the finest example from this period in the world. There are 600 painted and drawn animals and symbols, as well as 1,500 engravings, created during a time when the world's climate was cooling, and when large parts of the world were affected by a drought. With this knowledge, does it help us to understand the art better? Were the representations of horses, deer, stags, bovines and felines drawn as a record for the future? Did the ancient people think the world as they knew it was coming to an end? And so, maybe they were leaving a record of life before H1. Are the Lascaux cave paintings telling us a story? Or was the art just a way to pass the time when there was little else to do in a changing world? I don't know, but it is something to think about. In February 2021, I made a video about a 17,000 year old decorated musical instrument that was made from a conch shell. This was found in the Marsoulas cave in southern France, another European cave with engravings and paintings that date back to 17,000 years ago. At the foothills of the Pyrenees in southern France, we also find the Neox cave a giant complex with more than 8 miles of underground passages and galleries, and these are covered with magnificent rock art. The art dates between 15,000 and 17,000 years ago, again perfectly coinciding with the H1 event. The Elmiron cave in northern Spain, which is close to the Atlantic coastline, has a long history of human occupation, from 41,300 to 3,200 years ago. Inside there is one specific archaeological horizon, a culturally rich remnant deposit dating back to 16,600 years ago. The cave shows very extensive, intensive and or repetitive human occupation and maybe this was dictated by the climate. The Altamira cave is also in northern Spain and this shows repetitive human occupation and some of the cave art has been dated to 17,000 years ago. In the Yahua cave in south China, there was occupation between 44,000 and 4,000 years ago, but there is a strong 16,000 year old horizon, which includes a fine burial, fireplaces, fired bones, stone artifacts and also the remnants of wild rice. Although a lot more research is required, during the H1 event, it does look like people were moving into natural shelters around the world, and this could well be because of the H1 event, and people clearly settled for a large amount of time, and we can get that from the archaeological assemblages, and also the complexity of some of the artwork. This was happening in France, Spain, Turkey, Laos, China, and maybe even Australia. As reported in February 2021, Australia's oldest intact rock painting is a 17,000 year old jumping kangaroo, and this is surrounded by other animals including a lizard-like figure and a snake. Of course it is very likely that Australia has many older cave paintings, but this ancient mural is another piece of the puzzle, and may imply that 17,000 years ago, people in Australia were moving into rock shelters, and maybe this was because of the H1 event. Scientists agree there was a global climate catastrophe between 18,000 and 15,000 years ago, affecting different parts of the world in different ways. For example, large parts of the world experienced a mega drought, and that's because of very low rainfall. Some experienced much colder conditions, and some places became arid. 
At the same time, humans were moving into caves, with examples in France, Spain, Turkey, Laos, China and maybe even Australia. There are many more examples of cave deposits from this time around the world, and I'm sure there are many more yet to be discovered. But linking these cave settlements to the paleoclimate data recorded around the world could tell us why there was a clear change in human behaviour. Our ancestors were very much in survival mode, doing their very best to get through one of the most turbulent times in modern human history. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Ancient Architects. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel, please like the video, and please leave a comment below. Thank you very much.